MD Prepper here with a tabletop review and initial impressions of the new Zip Pistol and 22 Long Rifle from USFA. Saw this online probably a month ago and thought it was an absolutely fascinating idea. A uh, little gimmicky, but different, something I didn't have. Basically, it's a little bullpup pistol, if you will, in um, 22 Long Rifle. The magazine's here, and the magazine can actually help with the grip. You've got a long enough one. I'll talk about that here in a minute. And uh, a little odd design. You grip it like so, and you get a longer barrel and whatnot, about five. 0.25 inches out of the barrel out of about an 8 inch firearm overall. A little clunky, and you know, I'll talk about the specifics of this. It was a very low cost, fun little plinker that looked uh, amusing, and I had to pick one up. We had a gun show this weekend, and one of my favorite dealers uh, locally had listed on their website that they had three in stock, so they had one left in stock by the time I came around yesterday morning. So picked it up, couldn't pass it up. The MSRP listed for about $200 online for the company. I bought this for $235, I think. This one did not come with a magazine, but they do have some kits that do ship with mags. Now, let me go ahead and talk about the mag issue first before we get into the specifics. These things are a little finicky, okay? Um, they said that initially, they said that in all the reviews. you got to tinker with them a little bit to get them to work right with the right type of ammo and mags. The only magazine they recommend is your standard Ruger 1022 magazine. Now you think, wow, Ruger, great, I can put the 25 round mags in there. Uh, no, you can't. These bad boys which I've got plenty of for my Ruger 1022, the BX25s don't do real well because the tension spring isn't enough to load fast enough in this little zip gun, okay? They're working on a drop-in kit that you can buy from the company. They're not available yet, so just wait. Now, I do like the way this looks in the gun and the way this feels when you hold it. I did try it out today for the first time with a few rounds, and they're right, it will not cycle reliably at all. Uh, would not cycle. I could fire one round, then we'd have to manually eject the casing and everything else, so um, no go here. It didn't come with a magazine, and the guy at the store uh, said, oh, well, well, we'll throw in one of these. I thought he was trying to sell me one of these little Butler Creek um, magazines, and I wasn't going to pay for a magazine that wasn't going to work in the gun. But he said, oh, no, no, since they don't come with the uh, magazine, we're just giving you these. And I already knew this thing wouldn't work in this gun. But, hey, it was a free 10-round magazine. Even if I don't use it, I'll give it away to somebody or something. So, well, Butler Creek also tried this one. Also had lots of failures to feed and lots of trouble with this one, too. Um... Don't know where I got this old Eagle magazine. I only usually buy uh, stock Ruger mags, but had this one too. Got this somewhere. I have no idea. I've almost never fired this thing. But anyway, tried it out as well. Also lots of failures to feed. You know, almost every other round. It just did not like that at all. So you're going to be stuck with these boys and girls for the time being, unless you just want to tinker with things. So I got a few of these laying around, but I prefer the higher capacity ones. But I'm good to go for now. I'll put the gun out of the way for a second to show you the box. Cardboard box, nothing fancy. Marked right there whether it's one with a magazine or without. They do ship some of them with mags for a few bucks more. Uh, comes with a little uh, empty chamber indicator here that you can slide in and out. They tell you not to throw that away because it's got the little Zip Z and USFA on it, if you can see that right there. So, whatever. I got a little slide stop for 22s. Uh, what was interesting with this kit, obviously, other than your standard package info and inserts and all, had a little flyer in here that says, note, due to lack of ammo availability, general purpose target springs have been installed. Okay for use with CCI Blazer and similar ammo. Thank you. So, what's interesting is they come with apparently the target load springs and you can see right there, a set of springs for your uh, higher velocity ammo. Apparently this gun's very finicky with that. You can't just shoot general ammo with one set of springs. Um, which is probably why I ran into some failures and some trouble today when I took it out for a brief spin at the range. Um, like I said, I paid $235 for this, and uh, let me give you the breakdown stats, and then we'll talk about the range time on it. The barrel is 5.25 inches. Obviously, you don't see the full barrel because it comes all the way back to here, and I have measured it is 5.52 inches. Um, it's .95 pounds in weight. That feels about right, just short of a pound without the magazine in. Overall, I've measured 8 inches long. Um, oh, this is safety check, by the way, for you safety sallies out there. Um, they say the average width is 1.2 inches. Well, I don't think you can get an average width on this thing. Um, it's got too many angles on it. If you see this up close and personal, hopefully you can. How many angles this thing has across it, an average width? Um, I don't know. What I got right here, this width here at the bottom, the trigger guard and the housing, this lower part is about an inch. Um, it's about an inch and a quarter here and an inch and three quarters at the widest from my measurements overall. So. Um, Whatever. It's an eight inches long. Little clunky, little bulky. 
to hold. If you've got small hands, this probably isn't going to be very comfortable. And obviously, there aren't going to be any aftermarket grips because there are no grips. There is no grip or handle on this thing at all in the conventional sense. Um, overall, it's 3.1 inches high, by the way. Forgot to mention that. Um, comes in alternate colors other than black. All I saw at the gun show was the standard black color, okay, which I thought was just fine for a little black gun, a little laser looking pistol, zip pistol. Um, it comes in alien gray, coyote, tan, and blue, all of which look very, very cool on the website. Check it out. Um, all of my options were black, so black slimming, good enough for me. Um, I can't wait to see what kind of holster somebody comes up with this thing. For Wow. Um, couldn't even imagine what a holster would look like for this. But uh, anyway, other things about the weapon before I go into uh, actual shooting. You got your safety right up here. Um, fairly ergonomical, I guess, if you have an average sized hand. If you had short fingers or short hands, you're going to have trouble with this. And like I said, if you've got smaller hands, you're going to have trouble gripping this. Feels fine in your hand. A little clunky, but it sits real well. Um, recoil is very, very light. Almost no muzzle rise. Easy to stay on target. No problems there. Uh, the sights on this are just black on black, so no dots or anything. You see that right there? Though they do sell extra slides uh, for the top here, the inserts. Um, lots of them. They have one for a night sight. Uh, it's just an insert that has the slots for night sights. You can add Glock night sights or whatever. has another one for a Picatinny rail attachment for the top, which I think would be perfect for this with a little reflex side. Love to see what that does. They have an SBR for a short barrel rifle conversion. Um, obviously, I'm not going to pay $200 for a little pistol like this to SBR it. Um, just don't think that's worth the price. But um, I also have a an attachment, any other weapon, to attach this underneath a rifle, uh, like your AR-15 or something like that for a 22. Don't necessarily know why you want to mount this under another weapon, but you could just play around with, kind of fun. Instead of having a grenade launcher down there, you got a 22. Right, I'd prefer my 5.56. Five, um, other options, let's see, you got a little accessory rail, a tiny accessory rail here for a laser, most likely a light. A uh, laser's going to be a little far distant, I'd think, to be particularly useful. A light might be useful. Um, Oh, one little rail they have for the top here is a glow-in-the-dark version, uh, like the old glow-in-the-dark Frisbees from the 70s and 80s. They've got that little top insert, which is not very practical, but kind of fun to mess around with. Um, problems with this gun, before we talk about uh, range reliability, is the way you charge this thing. There is no slide to rack or anything in the conventional sense, which is interesting, but the problem here is to load, you have to put your fingers up here near the barrel. That's a little sketchy, boys and girls. you got to be real careful with maintaining your uh, discipline on the safety here anytime that you have to charge with this thing. You've got two barrels or two little nubs if you can see them up here up top and they're of dis different lengths. I thought that one was out of kilter with the other. They're not. They're supposed to be that way. This shorter one right here, if you can hopefully see that in the camera, is for restrike and it says so right there if you can see it. Okay. So if you pull the trigger that 22 doesn't go off and you know you've got a live round, you got to reach up here real close to that barrel. Not over it though, so that's okay I guess. I guess. Push it back and that will reset it so that you can fire again, but will not chamber another round. If you fired, let's say, and have it chambered around properly or didn't eject the last round, you've got this longer version over here which says zip load on it, which I don't know if you can see that. But uh, that's much closer to the barrel, a little too close for comfort maybe. And then you push that, and that will chamber another round. So that's to restrike, and that's to chamber another round. It goes back just a little bit different distance, maybe a quarter of an inch or so there maybe, I guess. haven't measured that. Um, kind of stiff there, not real smooth, but again, I've only got 50 rounds through this thing, so I did not field tested this at all to any real extent. Uh, There's a break in the rain today, and I ran out to fire 50 rounds of Arms Core 22. That's all I fired through this. I just picked up some mini mags today. Yay, the ammo shortage looks to be over. But uh, I've not taken this through its paces. I haven't broken it down yet. I've not changed out the internal springs. I've still got the little target springs in it that it came with. That might be some of my problem. Um, but taking this out to the range, I had a lot of trouble, obviously, using these three magazines, which I knew were going to be an issue. Um, I still had some trouble with the old classic. Okay, I would get about three rounds off uh, at a time before having a failure to eject uh, casing or um, failure to chamber around. Maybe it just doesn't like the arms core ammo, or maybe this gun just isn't broken in. 50 rounds is not enough to tell. I just kind of want to make a video tonight to show you guys what this thing looks like. Very space-aged, etc. I'm not going to give up on it yet, but this certainly isn't going to be my primary carry gun by any stretch of the imagination. This is just a fun little toy, something to talk about at the range, something nobody else has, something to plink around with, and just something different, frankly. Um, hopefully, whenever they get the BX25 rounds uh, magazines up and running, I'm going to have something that look cool like this that functions. 
because that actually gives you a place to grip. Um, feels a lot different, but again, I fired today like this. Recoil is non-existent. Um, I was just messing around, but accuracy seemed, accuracy seemed to be de uh, decent. Um, probably would be better if I had um, some better visibility on the sights. But anyway, guys, thought this would be interesting to talk about. I'll be doing future reviews and uh, troubleshooting on this thing, let you know how things turn out. I haven't even broken the thing down yet, so I'll probably make a bit about that. So the new little Zip Bullpup pistol. Very interesting. Very low cost to tinker around with. So far, I like it well enough. Andy Prepper out.